Happy New Year and welcome to the Lord's house on this the first Lord's Day of the New Year. God has been so good to us in the past 12 months. As we reflect back on that today and think about that as we said last week. We think of the last 12 months God has blessed us here so much spiritually and numerically. And let's thank God for that. I thank the good elders for your leadership and, and all of you for what you do. Again, 2016, we saw 13 precious souls according to the family of God. We saw 96 who dedicated their lives. 24 placed their membership here with us. Again, we say that to the glory of God. Uh, we can plant them in water. But God gives the increase, doesn't it? And we're so thankful for the increase that God has given here. We're having visitors continually. And we thank you today for visiting. With us, we always welcome you to the Church of Christ here at Lone Cedar. Remember, next Sunday we'll have with Cal Buck with us to speak at 9, 10, and 12.30. We will have lunch uh, at 11, and let's make plans now for that. And uh, I know that you're inviting others to come and be with us, but Cal always does a wonderful job. We look forward to him being with us next for us today. Proverbs chapter 16, let's look at verses 7 through 9 here in Texas this morning. Proverbs 16, verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues without justice. A man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. Hear that again. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. As we're gathered here this morning, again on this first Lord's Day of the new year, we all should be so thankful that God has now brought us safely to another new year. When you think about it, we're now one year closer to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't know how soon it's coming, but it's sooner than it was last year or yesterday. And we're also one year closer to our eternal home. Psalms 90 verse 10 tells us that on average our life expectancy is 70 to 80 to 90 years. And then the psalmist said we go to our eternal home. So God has brought us through another year. But in many ways, you know, a new year is no different than an old year. Other than we put up a new calendar and we start putting a different date on our checks. But in our minds, a new year is a time for a new beginning, isn't it? It's a time maybe to wipe the slate clean and get a fresh new start. A time when we can get another chance to get it right and do better in the future than we have in the past. And just like every year before us, beloved, 2017 bring with it new opportunities, it will bring new challenges, new privileges, and new difficulties. And when you think about it, should the Lord tarry his coming, 2017 no doubt will be shared with some good days and some bad days. It will have some good news and some bad news. There will be some happy times and there will be some times of trouble. And this is a time of year, as we know, that many are making so many New Year's resolutions. I want to ask you, have you made any resolutions so far this year? You know, a resolution, young people, is a firm commitment or a decision to do something that will improve your life. That's what a resolution is. Most resolutions deal with material things rather than spiritual things. But this morning, I want to point out a few things to you that I believe can help you and I resolve that we can do this year that will help us to grow in our spiritual lives and draw closer to our God this year. The first resolution I want to challenge you with this morning, 2017, is to surrender your plans to the Lord this year. Surrender your plans to the Lord. Our text said in verse 9, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs our steps. 
In James chapter 4, verse 13, James writes for inspiration. And he says, come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we're going to go into such a city, we'll buy and sell and get gay. Whereas you know, not what shall be on the model. These people James are writing to here in this text had mapped out their entire year. They'd come up with a plan that precisely determined when they would leave, how long they would stay. What business they would conduct and what profits they were going to make. And what James is rebuking here in that text is the proud, arrogant spirit of making one's plans without any obligation or no regard to the sovereignty of our Almighty God. In fact, James says there in verse 16 of James chapter 4, he said, But now you boast in your arrogance. <coughs> I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. All such boasting, he said, is evil. He asked there, how can you boast about everything you plan to do over the entire year next year when you don't even know what's going to happen today or tomorrow? Now, it's important this morning that we understand James is not telling us that it's wrong to make plans. It's not wrong to set goals for coming here. But that we do that, though, in a spirit of humility, with a humble surrender, realizing that our plans and our goals are always contingent with the divine will of God. And that's why we need to pray as hard as it is, Lord, not my will be done, but thine. When Jesus lay there in the garden of Gethsemane and sweat was pouring out in like great drops of blood as he lay face down on the ground, praying to his Father, Lord, I don't want to have to die, Father, for our creation. I don't want to have to die at this young age of 33. Yet he prayed, not my will be done, but done. And aren't you thankful it was the Father's will to redeem us? And by his life, we might have a life and have it more abundantly. So our plans are contingent upon the divine will of God. Proverbs 16, verse 3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. In our text, again, a man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. So may we learn this morning that everything we do has to be subject to the divine will of God now. Let's think of 2017 this morning as a trip we're about to take. We started this trip about 10 hours ago. And up to this point, everything has gone pretty smoothly, hopefully for all of us. We do not know what lies ahead on the remainder of this year-long trip we're going to be on. We don't know every twist and turn that's going to be in this road of life. We don't know the detours and dangers we might encounter. What news we may get or what mountains we may have to climb or what valleys we may have to go through in 2017. But God does. He sees what we cannot see. He knows what we possibly cannot know. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And so while we make our plans and while we set our goals and we mark our appointments on our calendar, may we resolve to surrender Ultimately, our plan to the Lord in humility. And pray, Lord, not my will be done, but thine. Well, the second resolution I want to challenge us with this morning, and this new year is, let us resolve to savor each moment that God blesses us with in this new year. Savor each moment. Again, in James 4, verse 14, a great question comes, For what is your life? It is even as a vapor that appears a little while and then vanishes away. This time of year, the imagery James uses here is so vivid to us. On a cold winter morning, this time of year, you can walk out your front door, and you can exhale that warm air. And you can see that smoke in front of you, that little vapor that you're blowing the smoke of your life. Well, that vapor doesn't go on and on, does it? You see that vapor for just a moment and then it's gone. And that vapor here is what James is talking about. That's how your life is. 
What is your life? It's as that little vapor that appears for a short time and then it vanishes away. I've asked you many times, what if we do live to a hundred? What's that when compared to eternity? Other scriptures bear out the brevity of our life. Psalms 39 and verse 4, David said, Lord, make me to know of my end. What is the measure of my day? That I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made me as hand breaths, and my age is nothing to you. Certainly, every man at his best is but as a labor. Then in Psalms 103, verse 15, the psalmist compares our life to that of grass and flowers in the field. That is cut down after it springs up, it's cut down, and then it's carried away by the wind. I don't know about you. It seems the older I get, the more quickly these years are passing by. Children and young people I know at your stage in life, maybe to you it seems like 16 will never get here. I remember in my life, that was a, the longest period of my life. It seemed like I wanted those drivers while I was so bad. And that time just dropped. But when you get out of those teenage years, life just seems to fly by, doesn't it? And perhaps all of us, to some degree or another, listen, we're all at times guilty of wishing our lives away sometimes, aren't we? You know, Brother Tim, I don't think I do that. Well, maybe at work, at school, we watch our clock until quit time. Maybe we count down the days until the weekend. Or maybe we mark off the months and days until our vacation time is here. Guilty sometimes, don't even realize it. Of wishing time, of wishing our lives away. There may come a day when we'll want to have some of those days back that we can't recall. Several years ago, the group Alabama recorded a song. The lyrics went like this I'm in a hurry to get things done. I rush and rush until life's no fun. <coughs> All I really got to do is live and die. But I'm in a hurry and don't know why. Does that song describe your life at times? We're rushing here, rushing there, we gotta do this, gotta do that. We're always in a hurry. But beloved, this year let's resolve to slow down a little bit and savor the blessings that we have of this life and enjoy them. Let's not think, well, I can't be happy today. There's happiness in some tomorrow. That's down the road. No. We need to be hard to be content in whatever situation we're in and be happy today. Enjoy today's blessings. Let's resolve to enjoy the little things a little bit more. Sunrises and sunsets with love. The beauty of flowers. The smell of fresh rain. As the old saying goes, <coughs> let's take time to stop. Smell the roses. This Resolve to spend more quality time with our loved ones and our family while we still have them with us. Let's resolve to savor our freedom of worship, that we enjoy the waving of our wonderful flag, the singing of our national anthem, and the pledge of our allegiance, all these things that we take for granted that are blessings and freedoms that one day we might lose. We need to enjoy those now. Let's savor our moments in God's Word. Time spent in prayer and opportunities for worship. I want to ask you, were there any times in 2016 that you could say in your heart that you willfully forsook the worship of the Lord last year? Let's all resolve right now not to willfully forsake Worshiping our God in this year. Amen. Amen. Let's make worship a priority in our lives. Why? Because that's what we're going to be doing in all of eternity. When we take our last breath as God's people, we're going to worship God for all of eternity. And if we don't enjoy it now, get excited about it now. How are we going to enjoy it then? Let's make sure we resolve to worship our Lord. <coughs> this 
new you. And I've said it many times, folks, we can't be perfect, we can't be faithful. More is required in a steward than in being found faithful. Let's resolve now to be more faithful and closer to our God and to savor each and every moment the blessings of this life, especially our worship. Number three this morning, let's resolve to seek the Lord's will in this new year of 2017. James 4.15, the Bible says, Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we shall live, we shall do this, and we're going to do that. I want to ask you, what would be different about your life if you saw God's will with all your heart this year? What would be different if you started out each and every day with a prayer, Lord, not my will be done today, but that. Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, I surrender my all to you. Not my will be done but that. So many Christians are confused when it comes to knowing and discerning God's will for their lives. There are some who believe that you just can't know the Lord's will. That's a lie from Satan. Well, some believe, well, God gives you signs, or God speaks to you in an audible voice. That's a lie from the devil. Some believe, well, you get this certain thing. Or you experience some kind of an emotion that lets you know the decision I'm making is in line with the will of God. And that's one of Satan's favorite lies. Proverbs 14, verse 12 says, There is a way that seemeth right, it feels right, but the end thereof are the ways of death. <laughs> Beloved, the truth is, the best place to discover God's will for your life is found in God's Word. Amen. God's Word reveals God's will for all of us. Everything in this book we have that pertains to life and godliness and everything we need to do. If I dedicate my life to living by the Word of God and living by faith and not by my feelings, then I know I'm going to be living within God's will. My life is in line with the will of God. I know I'm walking with it. Proverbs 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Every result. Be more like those noble Koreans in Acts 17. We can search the scriptures and examine them daily. Not just on Sundays. Do you examine the scriptures, Daddy? <coughs> Mom and Dad, listen. We cannot expect our kids to be daily Bible readers if we're not. We can't expect our kids to get excited about worship and Bible class if we're not. We resolve to search the Lord's will in His Word with receptive minds and obedient hearts. We're going to be better husbands and wives, more loving. We're going to be better moms and dads and sons and daughters, better citizens and better employees and, and better Christians and better, better neighbors. We can know assuredly that we're living in God's will. We're looking into God's love letter to us. One of my favorite passages in all the Bible It's found in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. God says, for I know the plans I have laid out for you. Declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Today, many of you will probably say, Happy New Year to a lot of people. Maybe today you're going to go home. You're going to gather around your table. You're going to enjoy your hog job like I did. Because in your mind, on this day, you think maybe that's going to prosper you. <clears throat> God took a brother Ken Phillips and said, I don't know if that's going to prosper me or not, but I sure do like it. We all enjoy that. But you know, having a new year that is going to be happy and fulfilling is not a matter of having everything you want. But having everything go your way. But having a happy new year is going to come about being dependent upon your dependence upon God. Ask yourself this morning, how did
dependent am I upon God in my own heart? Do I get so busy sometimes I don't even pray? Let's resolve to surrender our plan to the Lord and trust Him as we serve Him. And as that song, Brother Doug, let us sing this morning. I don't go about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine for skies may turn to gray. I don't worry about the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him. He knows what is ahead. Listen, God knows what's ahead in this new year we don't. He knows our past. He knows our present. And certainly he knows our future. He knows what lies ahead for us in this new year. And today, if you're not walking hand in hand with Jesus, it's certainly you have a sad future. Change that future this morning. Resolve to start out this new year walking with your Savior. If you're not as near to God and close to God as you need to be today, and you want to lock your slate clean and start out this new year in a right spiritual relationship with your God. We encourage you to do that today. We love you. If you've never obeyed the gospel, never been saved, never received, it's come today. Be baptized in his precious blood. Into his death. Old things passed away. All